Hello and welcome back to the third rail. We have a new addition to the collection this week. I just received this BB9200 of the SNCF, the French National Railways, and I thought we should have a first look at it together. Let's start with a quick model overview. This model is a Merklin 3038. It is one of the Merklin classics which remained in the Merklin program for a very, very long time. It appeared in the 1963 edition of the Merklin catalogue where it can be found on page 19. The same year, a second version was released with a minor modification on the cabs. The background of the running numbers was changed to red. This version remained in production until 1969 when version 3 introduced a few changes to the sides of the model this time. The running numbers were now printed on a flat surface and a separation was added to the center of the vents. Version 4 followed in 1977 with a minor change consisting in a new type of pentographs. I don't have a picture of the model for this one, but here is the type of pentograph used for this version. Another change was made for version 5 in 1979. Again, the pentographs were changed and a drum collector motor replaced the flat collector motor in the locomotive. The sixth and final version was released in 1981 with another change on the roof where the power line was now painted in a brown color. This version remained in the program until its withdrawal in 1982. On to a few vital statistics. The model measures 18 cm buffer to buffer. It is a complete metal construction, that's body and chassis. It is equipped with an electromechanical reverser that controls a three-pole motor. It's a drum collector motor in this version, driving two axles equipped with four traction tires. We have electric headlights on both sides, which are non-directional, so always on. The model is fitted with working pantographs and hook couplings with a pre-uncoupler for remote uncoupling operations. Now, let's have a high-level overview of the prototype for context. The model represents a BB9200 of the SNCF, the French National Railway Company. This class of locomotives was built for the 1500 volt network in the southeast and southwest of France. As a note, anything below Paris is considered the south in France. The locomotive could reach a maximum speed of 160 km per hour in standard configuration. All in all, 92 units were produced between 1957 and 1964. The locomotive immediately took over the most prestigious trains between Paris and the south of France. Le Mistral, Le Train Bleu, Saint-Plon Orient Express, Rome Express, and from 1967, the legendary Le Capitole between Paris and Toulouse. Six BB9200s were modified to operate at speeds of 200 km per hour for this train. They were painted in a red livery and equipped with single-arm pantographs. This made the Le Capitole the first 200 km per hour passenger rail service in the world. Two of the BB9200s that were assigned to Le Capitole could even reach speeds of 250 km per hour, but this capability was not used in regular service. These glamorous times didn't last very long. As soon as 1968, the BB9300, an upgraded version of the 9200, took over in front of some of the flagship trains. In 1970, the Le Capitole machines were replaced by the then new CC6500. 
The BB9200 was first reassigned to slower passenger services. Then, with the arrival of the BB7200 in the mid-1970s, the class was progressively reallocated to regional commuter and freight services across the southeast and southwest of France. The TGV accelerated the process in the 1980s. Over the course of their long career, the BB9200s underwent minor modifications. Some were retrofitted for push-pull services, skirts were removed, cabs were modernised, etc. etc. They also received a large number of liveries, more than 10, I believe. I find the SNCF liveries can be quite confusing, so I will simplify it a maximum, but be aware that there are variations of each livery type. Their original livery was green, with the exception of the Le Capitol machines, which were painted red. In 1975, a few units were painted in the new Corail livery, in time for the arrival of the then new Corail coaches. Most of these units were ex Le Capitol machines. From 1976 to 1996, a lot of units received the Béton livery, that's a grey livery with some orange notes. Uh, again, this livery was applied in various flavours. Between 1996 and 2001, a few machines received the multi-service livery. And then in 2000, machines assigned to the freight activity received a new green frais livery. Finally, some machines received the en voyage livery in 2003. By the year 2000, several units had travelled over 10 million kilometres. The withdrawal at scale of the BB9200 started in 2003 and the last unit left service in 2010. Our prototype entered service in 1958 in the original green livery used for the class. It then received a variation of the green livery known as the Oula livery. It was subsequently repainted in the grey beton livery it wore until its withdrawal in 2004. There is at least one unit in preservation today kept at the Cité du Train Mulhouse. This completes the high level overview. You'll find credits and links to useful information in the video description down below. Let's have a look at my 3038 now, which should be a version 6. I purchased this model from a new source. The model was described as being in excellent condition with no mention of servicing. The model is in its original box. The box is in very good shape. It has a few storage marks here and there, but that's normal. Nothing worth whinging about. Let's have a look inside now. We have a set of instructions. That's good. The model is wrapped in something. Uh, let me take it out of the box. I'll unwrap it. Oh, it already looks very good, I think. Right, let me grab a presentation rail and we'll have a closer look. There we are. Well, I think the seller was very honest. The model is in what I would consider an excellent, even pristine condition, cosmetically. I cannot see any scratch anywhere. The cab areas are lovely with their salon windows and silver details. This is a tooling used since the 1960s, so we cannot expect a masterpiece of detailing. But the green livery comes out very well and the silver accents are very nice, I think. Let's have a look around the model quickly. There is really nothing to report. Pure 3038 gorgeousness. And the silver paint has not peeled off too much. This is a weak point of Merklin models of the era. The good story carries on on the roof. Nothing is missing or broken. The little horns are intact. It is the right type of pantographs and the roof line is in the correct brown colour. 
If we look at the chassis, everything is in very good condition. We have a serial number sticker from 1982, so the chassis is original. And I don't think the model has seen much track. A test run will tell us more, I think. Let's move to the layout. Right, I'm going to rail the model. There we go. Let's check the wheels are in the right place. I'll readjust the shots so you can see a bit better. There we go. Right, I'll give the loco a bit of power now. The reverser is working. And we have movement. Excellent. Let's change the direction. And that is fine too. And the lights are operational. That's the front. Let's have a look at the back. Yes, that's fine. OK, let me check the pantographs quickly. Both are staying up. Excellent. The loco is also relatively quiet and it responds well to the throttle. So I don't think it will need much attention technically. Let's have a look inside to confirm. Let me set myself up. Right, ready now. As usual for this type of models, the body screw is located in the center of the chassis. Let me loosen it and I'll remove it along with the fake tank which doubles as a weight. And then the body simply lifts off. I'll check the pentograph screws are tight. They are. Good. The chassis is a typical Merklin arrangement for Bobo locomotives. We have the motor bogey and the reverser. And there's a lever to change to overhead operation. All looks in very good condition. Looking under the chassis, I'll check the traction tires quickly. They're all fine. The pickup shoe looks very good. Everything is also very clean. So we'll have a quick peek inside the motor just to confirm everything's okay. It's also a popular request from some viewers. So I'll remove the fake bogey. There we go. Now the clamp screw for the motor bogey is a bit. Uh, difficult. Uh, I'll get a larger screwdriver, so I don't want to damage it. There we go, it is free now. Let me slide the bogey out of the chassis carefully. Looking at the motor, everything looks original. I'll take the brushes out and the screws, then I'll lift the windings and motor plate. And we are in. And everything looks very good too there. And everything's moving freely. The model has been used before, but not much by the looks of it. And it must have been lubricated sparingly. Good stuff. As I am here, I will do a bit of cleaning, but I don't think it's uh, really necessary. I'll give the collector a quick wipe. And I'll clean the inside of the motor plate. Yeah, we just have superficial graphite deposits. I'll look at the motor bogey now. Uh, we have a tiny bit of resinification on one of the gears. A little cotton bud with a bit of IPA will take care of this. That's it, all done. Now I'll do a bit of lubrication before reassembling. The usual drop of oil on each of the gears and axle bearings. Then I'll apply a bit of grease on the end of the armature shaft and I'll put everything back together. Quick function check for the chassis. Everything's fine. OK, I'll put the body back on. Quick tidy up of the handlebars. And we're ready. Time for another function check. The transformer is set at 120 and we are off for a quick go around the ground loop. 
The locomotive is even quieter now. Right, we're getting to the station. First turnout is fine. Braking section 2. And the following turnouts were fine too. Excellent! So, it's time for a run-in. This gives us a bit of time to look at what cars from the 1980s Merkin program we could use. We have Dev Inox coaches, reference number 4076. These are real classics. Then there is of course another classic, the Wagonly sleeping car, model number 4029. Beautiful. There were also Korai VSC coaches. There is the 4161. And then there is also an export model, the 4171. The prototype was also used in freight services. There, anything French or European could be used. Basically, the majority of the freight section of the 1980s Merklin program. So I decided to go for a Mistral look. So I got a few things out of my magic drawers. We have seven 4076 coaches and a 4029 sleeping car. Here is the assembled train on a slow pass by after its trial run on the ground loop. We have the loco, the sleeper coach and the Devinox coaches. As we have no coupling adjustment problem, it is time for the main line, I think. The transformers are set at around 125, so halfway. Let's see if that is enough power for the logo with this heavy train. The station looks fine. Yep, no problem. It enters the main line now with a slight deceleration on the curve. That's normal. Now, the radius one curves. We are slowing down a bit there again, but that's also normal. And the same happens on the next curve. Now, second station. The permanent braking section is no problem for the loco there. And the usual acid test, the ramp. We have a progressive deceleration, but really not bad, in this configuration with a throttle set at 125. The full traction tires must be helping there. Now the next incline, there we have a bit of acceleration there, which is also perfectly fine. So, no problem. I think it's time to hand over to the train. We'll have a look at it from various angles around the layout for a couple of rounds. And then we'll switch to juvenile mode for a minute or so at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this beautiful train.